Our next speaker is Joel Lohner. Joel is a computer science engineer working at CERN for the last 10 years. He has experience in UMI design, system programming, distributed pro computing, and game development. Joel is passionate, self-taught programmer, and he believes that simple designs can help solving complex problems. Uh, the title of Joel's talk is How to Design and Implement a Modern Communication Middleware Based on Zero MQ. Thank you. So hello everybody. I will do a small talk about designing and implementing a modern communication middleware based on ZeroMQ. So I'm quite sorry, this is a rather long title, but you just need to know that this is about communication middleware and ZeroMQ. So first, before we start, in this presentation, red doesn't mean errors. Red is just a color code I will use for everything related to ZeroMQ. So now, ZeroMQ, what it is? It's a networking library, but it also acts as a concurrency framework. And what it does, it, it provides you this very simple socket-style API that you can use to exchange messages between threads, between processes, and between hosts. Um, those sockets, they come in several patterns, and some of them I will describe during this presentation. And it's fast, it's scalable, it's open source. Now, I will not tell you why we choose ZeroMQ amongst other transport libraries. This was largely described in a paper written in 2011. But what I want to discuss is a bit the reason why we decided to migrate, why we took the risk, why we spent resources to migrate to ZeroMQ. Okay. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> so at CERN, the, the main library, library we use for, uh, to exchange information with equipment within the accelerator complex is called RDA which stands for Remote Device Access. And the old version of this library, it's called RDA2, and it was based on CORBA. And one problem was, from the beginning, it had few unit and integration tests. It was written in 2000 with no uh, testing in mind. And over the year, we accumulated many patches, many fix, but we never really refactored the code. We were scared to break things because we did not test to validate. So eventually, this ended up in what we call big ball of mud. So we had this big piece of unmaintainable software. Other problems were the scalability. By design, it was not really scalable because it was based on synchronous call with huge uh, scope locks. And another issue was um, performance when one client will try to do many small synchronous calls to a server. This was very slow. And as a workaround, we implemented what we called array call, where we will just do one single call with a big array containing all the small requests. Last problem was related to the API. And those problems, we were not able to fix them in a backward compatible way. So there was a lot of singletons, which also contributed to the problem of not having a lot of tests. And the C++ API was exposing raw pointers to the user, which led to unsafe code. Now, the new version, which we called RDA3, so at CERN we use what, what I call the Hollywood naming scheme. We just take the last version and increase the number of at the end, so we just called it RDA3. And it's based on zero MQ. And from the beginning, we decided to use a test-driven development, so to focus on the test, to focus on the functionalities, which led to a more cleaner and maintainable code. The design from the beginning was much more scalable, so it was lar it's largely asynchronous and log-free log due, due to the, our zero MQ, the nature of ZeroMQ. And also, we didn't need it array calls, because ZeroMQ provides batching out of the box, which consists of, of grouping uh, small requests together when, possi when possible on the wire. Speaking of the API, so no singletons, of course, and we use smart pointers in C++. So now, this is a bit how we felt with uh, developing with RDA2. We were trying to handle this, this big ball of, of mud, so it was a kind of a bit of a pain. Uh, RDA3, we felt much more comfortable and in control, right? So now let's um, dig a bit in the internal architecture of the solution we implemented. So on the bottom, we have the network, and then on top, we have the user code. So all the logic that the user wants to 
to inject in the client and in the server. In the middle, we have the, our middleware library, so RDA3. And we decided to split it in two separated layers, where the first layer on the bottom, we called it transport layer. And what it does, basically, is just an abstraction of the underlying network library, so ZRMQ in, in our case. On top of the transport, you have the business layer, which is agnostic of the network library because it only access the network through the transport. And the main responsibility of the business is to implement the device property model, which is a de facto standard model we use at CERN for controlling equipment within the accelerator complex. Device property model uh, has two main paradigms that are supported. First one is request reply, where you just send the request to the client, uh, to the server and receive the reply. We have either get request, so read operation, or set request to write things to the server. The second paradigm is standard publish subscribe, scribe, where the client subscribe to a given access point and then receive periodic notifications from the server. If you want to know more about device property model, a paper was written in 2001 on the subject. So now, now let's <clears throat> dig a bit more into the details and see how we integrated ZRMQ in our solution. So here we have the client and the server, and we want to enable network communication between the two. So the first pattern we use from ZRMQ is called dealer router. With dealer router, on the, on the clients, we can create one dealer per client, and dealer basically gives you bidirectional asynchronous communication. And then on the server, we can put a router. And the router, you can connect it to many dealers. And what it does, basically, it, it can access specific dealer using an identifier. So this pattern is very convenient when you want to connect one server to many clients, which is why we use a dealer router to connect our client and server. And then we have our transport uh, layer. And transport is very simple. What it consists of is a single thread that we call the dispatcher thread. The responsibility of this thread is only to dispatch messages. It doesn't do any processing. It doesn't do any serialization. Then, OK, we have the user code, so the user logic and some uh, user threads. And of course, we want to be able to receive message from the user. So for that, we use another ZeroQ pattern that is called push-pull. So push-pull is unid unidirectional. You can create many push sockets. And all those push sockets, they will push message to a sync which we call a pool socket in this case. So this is very convenient when you want to have many peers, so many threads in our case, sending message to a single entity, a single peer. This is why we use this to allow the, the user threads, all the user threads, to send messages to the transport. And then, finally, we have the business layer, which at its core is, is just a thread pool, actually, and it receives the messages and it perform callback on the user code. So we need also a communication on the other way. We need to be able to, from the transport, send back message to the business. And for that, it's possible to use ZRMQ. You could, for example, use RecRep and provide, uh, perform fair queuing this way among the, the thread of your pools. But for ez 3 we decided to simply have a callback and delegate this responsibility to the business layer. So it's the business layer that um, performs the queuing the overflow is the one that decides if a request must be dropped or not. Now, let's see a simple request reply call, so a get call, for example. The request always or originates from, the, from the, some user threads, right? And then the request goes to the push pool. It's handled by the dispatcher on the client side. Then it, it goes through the network, through the dealer router. It reaches the dispatcher on the server side which perform the callback. And eventually, at some point, one thread of the pool will pick up the request and perform a callback. So it will give it back to the user code. User code process the request and send back the reply to the thread. Now, here we have a small problem. We don't have any channels to send it back. So we simply use push-pull as well to push the reply back to the transport. It will go again through the network, be handled on the client side. And likewise, once it's handled by one thread of the business layer pool, a reply will be, we have a callback on the, on the, client, on the user code to give back the reply. The client receives the reply. 
Now, publish subscribe. To establish a subscription, we use request reply. So the, the client just create or destroy subscription using request reply. And once the subscription is established, server sends notifications. And notifications always come from the user threads on the server side. So we use the push-pull socket to send it to the, to the transport on the server side. And then it goes through the dealer router through the network. So here we can note that we don't have separated channel for publish subscribe. We just send request reply and notification through the same TCP connection. And once this is done, it will be picked up by the dispatcher, which will perform the callback. And at some point, one thread will pick it and give the notification back to the user. So now, to conclude, RDA3 is used in operation since already three years now for the whole uh, accelerator complex at CERN. And we have a very positive operational experience so far. It's much more scalable than the previous solution. It's reliable. And also this somehow relatively simple design I showed you just before, it proved to be, proved to be very efficient to solve the use case that we have at CERN. The development was done in collaboration with GSI. They also use it currently at GSI, and they will deploy also RDA3 for the fair complex. And now, I think, why did it work? There was two uh, key factors, and the first one is 0MQ. So 0MQ, it's, first, it's simple, it's fast, it's scalable, but also it provides you good pattern, which allowed us to, good, to build good software on top of those patterns. And the other factor, is not uh, technical, is the development process that we use during the, the development of the solution. So we had a good uh, communication inside the team. We try to be as agile as possible. We wrote a lot of tests. But also, more important maybe, we had early adopters. And we were in close relation with the adopters, which allowed us to put in place an iterative process where we would quickly get feedback, quickly solve the issues, and make sure that the solution work and solve really what needs to be solved. Nothing less, nothing more. So if you want more info, or just keep in touch, or more details, we have a public email. It's cnw-info at cern.ch. Thank you. Thank you, Joel. Um, we have time for some questions. Jean-Michel? I have a simple question concerning acronyms. Actually, uh, it was very Just wait quick. for the wait, mic. Wait. Yes, I have a, qu a simple question concerning acronyms. You, you, uh, you speak about RDA. Why, uh, while uh, concerning CERN, I know CMW. What is the relationship? Where is CMW? Where is RDA? So uh, CMW is, is wider. So RDA is just it's the library. It's the core library that I just described here. CMW is the, it's a project. And within this project, we, we, our main product is RDA. But CMW team, we also provide directory service. We provide authorization, authentication. We provide all the service that goes around it. So we are really we are service provider, and we also provide one uh, library called RDA that our users use to connect the peers. Yes. There's another question at the back. Uh, thanks for the presentation. So the question is, which kind of serialization are you using for the messages uh, between the client and servers? This is a very good question. Uh, like we tend to do at CERN, we use a custom serialization. So we developed our own custom uh, serializer inside the team. Uh, because actually, it was just, we just wrote what solved our problem. It just serialized message how we wanted to serialize, and it was faster than the solution that we would find uh, externally. Now, I think this was a good uh, decision at the time. I don't know if it's still a good decision now. Uh, and I think it's also fine to use a serializer, uh, external, I mean, existing serializer as well. There was one more question at the back. Yeah, um, I have a question regarding like your um, subscribe notify model that you illustrated. It looked like um, each client has to subscribe and then it's kind of individually notified. Do you have any um, method of like multicasting in place, even if it's within a single machine or how do you handle it? It doesn't seem like um, 
notifying many clients is very efficient. <coughs> so we thought about multicasting, and actually uh, we can't use it at CERN with our, uh, within the technical network. And also we didn't saw a lot of, of gain of, in using multicasting. And actually this was one reason why we decided to not use a separated channel for notifications, because we just didn't add the need for multicast. Yes, it's reply your, answer your question. Any other questions? There's one here at the front. Just use the mic. Available. The question is, how do you make this library available? Is it open source or is it commercial? So now, now for now, it's um, available on the CERN SVN. So with GSI, we collaborated. We had a collaboration where we would physically work with, with people. Uh, and then they just connect to our SVN and take the source code. So currently, uh, our solution is not uh, open sourced. But this is something we also plan to do in the future. We plan to move to Git, and uh, we plan to use the open source license. OK, let's thank Joel one more time. Thanks. Thank you.